Good afternoon. How's everybody doing? Hopefully lunch was good and we're not still lethargic. I know the coffee and ice cream out there is a dangerous combo. You take the coffee to the coffee, uh, you take the uh, ice cream to the coffee stand, pour some espresso on it, you've got yourself an affogato. I've been having some fun out there. So this session is um, kind of special to me and to a lot of people here. Um, I realized when we started planning for GRPC Conf that, oh my gosh, how did we miss it? We're about to come up on the 10 year anniversary of GRPC, right? So we are going to take some time to look back at the past decade, reflect on it, and then think about maybe where we're going in the future. So I'm Richard. I am uh, a maintainer on the GRPC project, specifically TL for Python, but also work on a bunch of other stuff. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Juna Ye. I'm a GRPC maintainer, and I'm excited to talk about 10 years of GRPC. All right, let's jump into it. So believe it or not, it has been 10 years since GRPC was created. And when I first heard that the anniversary was coming up, I, I really just had to double check because it did not feel like it had been that long. You know, birthdays aren't quite as clear cut for software as they are for humans, but it is very clear that the first commit was made internal to Google in December 2013, and the project was released publicly on GitHub in February 2015. So we are right around that time right now. No matter how you cut it, we are a decade from when the gRPC project began. So as you might know, gRPC started out as an open source version of Stubby, Google's original remote procedure call system. But over the past 10 years, gRPC has swept the cloud native mobile and machine learning ecosystems. It'd be difficult to imagine a large system nowadays that didn't have gRPC inside of it in one form or another. So join us in taking the opportunity now to look back at the past 10 years and to look forward at the years to come. Okay, so let's take a look at the history of gRPC from a very high level. As I mentioned, it all started way back in 2013. Google had been doing RPC with protocol buffers for years and years, but since Google was starting out its own cloud, there was a greater need than ever to expose APIs for public consumption. So they started the 10-year project of building gRPC. The first few years were a team effort to design a viable cross-language protocol and API across a staggering nine different languages. Two and a half years after the first commit, the 1.0 release was made on GitHub with a familiar set of basic client and server features that we've come to depend on. All right. Moving into 2017, gRPC was donated to the CNCF, starting a new era in gRPC. The community grew larger, and gRPC picked up more hours in production. We figured out more advanced features that users needed, like interceptors and flat buffer support. And in 2019, gRPC started working on the world's first service mesh without proxies with its implementation of XDS support. Adding all of this varied and rich functionality right into the client and server libraries enabled users to get the benefits of service mesh without paying all of the costs. We kept on building out more and more service mesh features in the gRPC library until we got to where we are today, with no more burning user requests for service mesh functionality, near feature parity with traditional service meshes. During this period, we also built observability capabilities deep into the gRPC implementation to ensure users are able to better understand what's happening in their systems. And more recently, we've been engaging and integrating with other hotly growing communities, such as Kubernetes and the Rust programming language. So let's zoom back in on the birth of gRPC. As Google Cloud was beginning and APIs exposed to the public were more important than ever, the Stubby team was faced with an interesting problem. How do you open source Stubby and make it successful? One problem was that Stubby was very C++ centric, but the world outside Google had much less of an emphasis on C++. It was clear that this needed to be a framework of support for a wide variety of languages. And Stubby was also hopelessly tied to Google internal infrastructure for name resolution and load balancing. And the libraries it was built on would be a nightmare to open source along with Stubby. So the choice was made to build a new project completely from scratch with the code name gRPC. The very first code was written by Louis Ryan in December 2013. He went on to be a leader in the Istio community and is now CTO of Solo.io. Back then, HTTP2 wasn't an IETF standard, and it was still just called Speedy. 
the protocol itself wasn't stable yet either. So as the gRPC team was writing code, it was eagerly awaiting new drafts of the HTTP2 spec and changing up the gRPC implementation in response. Across nine languages, three operating systems, and multiple instruction set architectures, the gRPC team worked diligently to build the first stable release. Along the way, the team debated about what to call the project. Some strong contenders were brought forward, such as proto-call, like calling a proto, arcwire, and xkrpcd, a combination of rpc and xkcd. And in the end, the team chose arcwire. But just before the first public release, someone in leadership shot down the name arcwire, and the team continued on with the code name, grpc, the one we all know and love. But we could very easily be at ArcWireConf 2024 today if things had played out just a little bit differently. So finally, in 2016, it was the big day. The team had worked out all the bugs, settled all the thorny design questions, and declared gRPC stable and generally available. We have several video game industry veterans on the team, so of course there was a golden copy created. This is the gRPC 1.0 release written onto 10 separate floppy disks. This is right around when I first heard of gRPC. It was making a lot of noise on the internet and in the software industry in general. Someone did a tech talk specifically centered around gRPC Python at my previous company in 2016. The team formed a tight-knit community and an identity around the framework we had brought into the world. We built an eight-foot-tall wall of sticky notes forming the original gRPC logo. That was at MP3 just across the lawn from this building. From there, the team went hard to work, responding to user feedback and improving the ecosystem. Meanwhile, the industry started to react. So I'll ask Gina to describe that for us. Thank you, Richard. So since the first public release of gRPC in 2015, gRPC has experienced rapid adoption across various, various industries and applications. Its high performance capabilities and language agnostics nature have made it a go-to solution for building efficient and scalable communication systems in the modern distributed environments. Cisco integrated with gRPC from 2016. Netflix started using gRPC for their backend communication and contributing to gRPC from 2018. Spotify adopts gRPC in 2019. Reddit, Reddit LinkedIn also moved to gRPC later on. It's incredibly rewarding to see how our solution is being embraced by developers and making a positive impact across various industries and applications. gRPC has proven to be an exceptional feat for cloud-native architect architectures. It is designed to enable efficient communication between services by using protobuf to reduce the message size and HTTP2 to increase the network efficiency. And it enables real-time communication, making it ideal for microservices that has a need to exchange large amounts of data. Its language agnostic nature made it easy to be deployed on various platforms and infrastructure it also allowed developer to build your services in your preferred languages. The portability is crucial in the cloud native environments where it is quite common to build, to build your microservices in several languages. And last but not least, gRPC provides features like load balancing and retries to improve the, to improve the fault tolerance and ensure the reliability in the distributed systems. HCD, ContainerD, Kubernetes, Google Cloud Platform have been using gRPC for their internal communication. And gRPC has become a popular choice for building modern, scalable, and efficient applications in the cloud-native environments. As the tech lead for gRPC Python, I have gotten a front row seat to the massive adoption gRPC has had in the machine learning community as it has grown. With distributed learning and remote inference both important use cases, gRPC is a core part of many different machine learning systems. One of my earliest memories on the gRPC team was fixing a deadlock in TensorFlow that was originally thought to be caused by gRPC. And with the increasing growth in machine learning, gRPC's presence here shows no signs of slowing down. You can expect a strong presence here in the coming years. gRPC has emerged to be a powerful tool for mobile app development. 
and mobile developers can leverage your PC to build robust and scalable mobile apps that can access data from various backend systems, including your IoT devices, the cloud-based microservices, and the mobile apps. Additionally, gRPC support of bidirectional streaming allows for real-time data exchange, making it well-suited for features like live updates, chat, or, in, or collaborative tools. With its ability to optimize the network usage and improve the overall performance, gRPC has become a popular choice to build your mobile apps. Niotic, the company who developed a popular mobile AR game called Pokemon Go, uses gRPC for their cross-component communications within their systems. Uber optimized their push notifications platform by leverage gRPC's bidirectional streaming, and it has been rolled out globally across all the Uber apps, like Uber Driver, Uber Rider, and Uber Eats, on both Android and iOS. As Richard mentioned earlier, gRPC support a number of languages when 1.0 was released in 2016, and more language support comes along the way. Given JavaScript widespread popularity, we decided to embrace Node.js and develop a native implementation. Similar story for c -Shop. A native c -Shop implementation was launched with the name of gRPC.net. Dart, Swift, Kotlin support are also available for gRPC developers nowadays. Over the past few years, we are committed to making cloud-native adoption easy and enabling you to scale your services seamlessly. Proxylus gRPC Service Mesh streamlines the development process by eliminating the operational overhead associated with managing and maintaining the sidecar process. This approach not only reduces the complexity, but also improves the resource efficiency making it particularly appealing for large-scale and cloud-native environments. Also, Proxylus gRPC comes with many features which allows you to bring service mesh capabilities to your gRPC applications easily. gRPC supports various authentication and authorization mechanisms, such as OAuth, JWT token. It can be integrated with load balancing systems to distribute the traffic across multiple server instances. It also provides a reflection service that allows the clients to dynamically discover the methods and the messages supported by a server. gRPC comes with a building retry and timeout mechanisms to improve the fault tolerance and reliability. It allows the developer to intercept the calls and modify the request and response before or after it's processed. Last but not least, gRPC supports plugin that can be used to extend its functionalities. We are excited to share that gRPC route resource in the Kubernetes Gateway API is GA a couple months ago, and you can use it to easily define the routing rules for your, tra for your gRPC traffic. If you are interested in learning more details about the Proxylus gRPC and the gRPC route resource, I have another talk earlier today, and you can watch a recording when they're available online or check out the documentation at the show link below. So that was a look back at the past 10 years. Clearly some great successes with adoption. But why study history without trying to draw some lessons from it? One thing that we've noticed repeatedly is that people tend to prefer implementations written natively in the target language instead of built as C extensions with a wrapper in the target language. We found repeatedly that packaging and distribution was not mature enough for it. So in three cases, we saw a transition to a pure target language implementation with Node, Swift, and .NET. Time and again, when talking to users, we hear that Protobuf is a pivotal part of their success with gRPC, starting with a strongly typed contract spanning network boundaries, language boundaries, and operating systems is incredibly powerful. And it speeds up people's development in ways that are difficult to describe unless you've experienced it yourself. And as an added bonus, it even results in better performance and efficiency. We've had a very strong focus on backwards compatibility. Our interop tests go all the way back to 1.0. So a client using our latest release will work against a server written with 1.0 and vice versa. And over the years, we've built a lot of rich functionality into gRPC. You saw that on our timeline. And with that comes complexity. 
but we feel that we've done a pretty good job of making sure that you only pay the cost of that complexity if you are using the particular feature and you're getting the benefit of that feature. The past 10 years have been an incredible journey filled with remarkable achievements. The rapid growth in adoption inspires us to continue innovating and push the boundaries of what's possible. Now we are thrilled to share our vision of the exciting future ahead. Abhishek Kumar's keynote this morning highlighted the exciting expansion of gRPC language support to Rust and our close collaboration with the Tonic team to achieve the feature parity in the native implementation. Doug's gRPC maintainer, Lucio, the Tonic Ripple owner, had a talk earlier today about gRPC Rust. If you're interested, check out the recordings whenever it's available online. While expanding the language support, we are also looking ahead to the future of AI-assisted development tools. Eric and Yuxin had an AI demo earlier today, and we are committed to further expansion, further explore the possibility in this exciting space. Another area that we would like to invest further is protobuf management, which Richard and Terry presented earlier today, and be sure to catch the recordings of their talk if you are interested in improving your developer workflow with protobuf and gRPC. Last but not least, we want to empower every gRPC developer to reach your full potential. We will continue to create more documentation, example code, and tutorial videos to help you succeed. We would love to hear your, your insights and experiences at our in-person and virtual gRPC meetups and considering joining us as a gRPC maintainer to help us shape the future of these amazing technologies. Thank you for joining us. The future of gRPC looks incredibly bright and we are thrilled to be on this journey with you. Don't forget to visit gRPC.io for more documentation and example code. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to get notifications when there are new videos available. And join our regular meetups and mailing list to get the latest updates of gRPC. And with that, I'm handing over to Kevin to talk about the next sessions of Birds of Feather. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.